We're dedicating the shiur Refua Shlema of Yitzchak Mordechai Ben Matilda, Briut and Success in Heart Surgery, and also for the complete health Refua Shlema of Eliyahu Klonimus Ben Poria. Rolam it male alem rachamim rabib, bechen bechesed rachamim. וגם תשובה שלמה לנטלי בת שלי, it's not her phone number. שולם הלחם, welcome home, בעזרת השם, we're gonna sing a little bit today, if you want, if you're ready. אמר רבי עקיבא, אמר רבי עקיבא, אשריכם ישראל. אמר רבי עקיבא, אמר רבי עקיבא, אשריכם ישראל. אשריכם, אשריכם, אשריכם ישראל. אשריכם, אשריכם, אשריכם ישראל. לפני מי אתם מתארים, מי מתאר אתכם? לפני מי אתם מתארים, מי מתאר אתכם? אביכם שבשמיים, אביכם שבשמיים, אביכם שבשמיים, אביכם שבשמיים, ואומר, ואומר, מקווה ישראל השם, ואומר, ואומר, מקווה ישראל השם, מה המקווה מתאר את הטמאים, אף הקדוש ברוך הוא מתאר את ישראל, מה המקווה מתאר את הטמאים, אף הקדוש ברוך הוא מתאר את ישראל ואומר ואומר מקווה ישראל השם ואומר ואומר מקווה ישראל השם מה המקווה מתאר את הטמאים אף הקדוש ברוך הוא מתאר את ישראל מה המקווה מתאר את הטמאים אף הקדוש ברוך הוא מתאר את ישראל Like we said before, that what that purifies the contaminated people, it's mikveh. But that what that purifies Am Israel, it's a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Means you have a difference between the contaminated people to Am Israel. It's two different things. Contaminated people, it's people that don't have faith. So they have to go to the mikveh. They believe that they need mikveh. But people that have faith, they know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is purifying them every moment of their life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu meteret Yisrael. What's purifying you? 40 se'ah of water is what it purifies you? No, Hashem. Mikveh Yisrael, Hashem. The Mikveh of Am Yisrael, it's Hashem. There was one righteous person, an Admor, I told you that once. that he was accepting people before of a holiday and he didn't have time to go to the mikveh. And then he said to all of the people, please stretch your hands, open your hands like that. And he was running under the hands, inside the public, in between the people. He was running and then he said, Mikveh Yisrael Hashem, Hashem is Am Yisrael, Mikveh Yisrael, Mikveh it's Yisrael, Am Yisrael. And he was purified, I promise you, and he didn't have no mikveh. It all depends in the heart. Kudsha Berichu Li Babaya, Kadosh Baruch Hu won the heart. And each and every one of us can achieve levels like um, higher than prophets. Higher than prophets. Higher than prophets. Because of our lackings, because we're so far, because we're coming from such a distance. This is why Kadosh Baruch Hu he sees all of our effort, all of our sorrow. And he appreciates that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu's got good eyes. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees, sees how much it's hard for you to wake up in the morning. How much you're suffering not to fight with your wife, to take your head down, not to argue with the rebukes, with the etzara. He sees how much you want to be holy and then again you have gamma brit and you want to be kosher and again you're looking at women and again you're falling and he sees, he sees the will. He sees how much you want to be kosher and you're crying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shel Olam. Purify me, help me. Hashem Barach is so kind. 
There is no kindness that, that can destroy, descri describe Hashem. If in the back of HaKadosh Baruch Hu he's got 13 midot of kindness, what he's got in front? All kindness on top of kindness on top of kindness, covered with love and grace and beauty and, and, and all good things that you can say cannot describe HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's beyond all good that we can grab, that we can understand. And He's here, He's available, He's here, He's now. Through that simple understanding, simple it but do, talking to Hashem, this is it, you're with Hashem. Just believe in it now. That one, Hirhur Tshuva, makes you from the worst sinner to be the biggest righteous man. It's Sadiq Gamur. You are a Rasha Gamur and you become to be Sadiq Gamur. It depends if you believe in Chachamim, if you have a Munat Chachamim to believe in those Masechtot, in those Gmarot. This is it. This is it. Rabbi Meir Balanes is saying that if a person is doing Tshuva, they forgive him and all of the world because of him. If you would just believe in those simple words of Rabbi Meir Balanes, you don't believe Rabbi Meir Balanes, you don't believe, you don't count. Ah, Rabbi Meir, he was talking. Yes, this is Rabbi Meir, he was talking. You don't think that he knew what he was talking about? And Rabbi Meir, he asked the, the people to bury him standing, standing on his legs. Why? Why he asked to do something like that? Because he wanted that when Mashiach gonna come and gonna be the resurrec resurrection of the dead, of the dead, he gonna be able to run fast to accept the face of Mashiach. And that he will not gonna waste time from lying down to stand up, to sit straight up himself and then to climb out from the grave. No, he wanted to be able to run fast. Misirut nefesh of a man, misirut nefesh. And he also was a Baal Tshuva, Rabbi Meir Baal Anes. He started his life as a, as, 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 as a frum, as a religious. No chas shalom, total bad tshuva. But he was doing tshuva. He had a horrible thing that happened to him in his lifetime and he went out to the streets and he was shouting and confessing <coughs> in front of people and opening everything that everyone, it was a disgrace for him that he opened that sin that <coughs> happened to him accidentally. He was drunk, he wasn't aware to himself at all. And he came out to the streets when he realized what that he done and he confessed and he talked and he revealed it that everyone gonna know. And his students told him, what are you doing? You're Rabbi Meir Balanes. Close your mouth. Shut up. <laughs> and he said, if I'm not gonna confess here in this world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu gonna judge me in the world to come. Means that if you're doing tshuva again and again, no one's gonna judge you on your avonot. Who gonna be the stupid person to drop that opportunity? If you confess here, they're not judging you in heaven. This is it. They're not judging you anymore. Who gonna be the silly person that the police officer is stopping him, telling him you now need to pay a fine, and he's saying, no, wait, please, two minutes. And he's doing tshuva and said, all right, now you're not gonna receive that fine, that ticket, that bill. Just on top of that, you're going to receive money. Your avonot becomes to be your merits. Now you're going to be a Chumrim Ezrach Sug Aleph, safe driver. You, you receive a sticker. You're allowed to pass 100. You're allowed to drive like a, an ambulance, whatever you want to do. Because you're doing tshuva. No red lights for you anymore. You have visa. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Because of what? Because you were confessing. Who are going to drop that opportunity? Only someone that don't believe in that. They don't realize what they're offering to us. They're offering to us the opportunity to clean everything and to make from everything diamonds. <coughs> diamonds and gold and rubies and pearls and whatever. Only by the most easiest mitzvah of them all, talking to Hashem. Take words with you and go back to Hashem. It's also words of Rabbi Meir Balanes. And on that person that is taking those words to Hashem Itbarach and doing tshuva, the world been open for him. Everything is open. Everything, the heaven is open for you. You can see heaven. 
when the Epikosim were arguing with Rabbi Nathan and they shown him proofs why there is no Hashem in the world and brought him verses and tried to twist his mind Rabbi Nathan screamed he said I'm telling you I see Elohim, I see God when you're serving Hashem Barach and you bring Hashem Barach into your life you don't need no proofs that there is a Creator you live with Hashem your life is with Hashem, Hashem is here you see that when you're thinking about Hashem, Hashem is thinking about you when you're praying Hashem is answering and when He's rebuking you, He's rebuking you on your lackings and it's, it's all loving kindness you see that Hashem is wrapping you, that Hashem hugs you and if you have lackings on faith, you need to close your eyes and to beg Please let me feel that you're with me. Let me feel that you love me. That I will never gonna forget you. Never, never, never. On that to work. Hours on hours on hours. Let me see that everything is good. Let me see. Let me see. Let me live the faith. Let me be a believer. Let me believe in you, Ribbona Shalom. That I won't fall to stupidity, to imaginations. Like I have a certain being, like I have a certain something, like I exist. When I'm not exist, think that there is something imaginary that does not exist, that he thinks that he exists. Stupid thing. And we're not exist. From the moment that David HaMelech said, Enod Milvado, there is nothing except of Hashem, this is it. Drop all of your wisdoms. They're not exist. They're not standing. But it's hard for you. All right, so ask for a discount. Ask for, for, for pleasure. Ask for satisfactions from Hashem. Tell Him that. You have complaints, you have arguments, you have problems. <laughs> Great. Go talk about it with Hashem. Hashem, it's too hard for me. Those hours, it's too hard for me. The parnasa, it's too hard for me to guard my eyes. Great. And by that, you're purifying everything. Like that we said. When the Kohen, he sees the leprosy, you've been purified. But if you're going to keep on hiding the leprosy, no one can purify you. If you're not, not taking your stuff out from the house, that everyone going to saw, going to see that you were talking Lashon Ara, that you were a sinner, that you were sinning. And the Kohen will come and going to check the rooms and everything. And then he's going to say, all right, I see that you're doing tshuva. Pure. If he's not saying pure, you cannot be pure. You're gonna paint your house thousands of times. You're gonna paint, plaster the house, gonna ruin the house, rebuild it. Nothing gonna help. Nothing gonna help. The Avonot are chasing after the person and they're not letting him off, not letting him for a moment. Don't let him run. Why? Because Hashem loves you. And because that He doesn't want you to go filthy from this world to Judgment Day, He wants to purify you. This is why He's bringing back all of the Avonot, back into the life of the person. He thinks that everything is perfect, everything is great, now he's a Baal Tshuva, and suddenly he sees that his children are off the, off the track, off the way. Because you haven't done Tshuva on your childhood, and you haven't done tshuva on all of the filthy movies and all of the, I don't know what, Hollywood mo would, mm, filthy movies that you saw. You say filthy movies like Hollywood is different, so I <laughs> made it all in one package. Filthy movies. On the Holocaust there are filthy movies, so just need to understand. So you're not doing tshuva on all of what that you've done in your life, so Suddenly your wife, she's got a desire for Facebook and she has to find herself and she needs to, to develop herself and to, and to grow and to, I don't know what, all of the imaginations of this world. And she's after all of the world. Why? Because you haven't done tshuva, she's just your mirror. And you're not ready to do tshuva, so you start, fight, start fighting with her. And you're fighting with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, instead of accepting the fact that you were a sinner that haven't made complete tshuva yet. And all of that rebuke is coming only to give you that gift of fixing every detail in your life. And a Baal Tshuva can fix everything in a way like that, that even righteous people cannot be purified like that, cannot achieve those levels. And if you don't believe me, you have a problem in your faith. Because it's written in all of the Gemarot. And all of the righteous people are talking that through all of the generation. 
that the power of a Baal Tshuva is huge, is enormous, is great. But people don't believe in that because they're lazy. And when a Kadosh Baruch Hu doesn't want a certain person to do tshuva, he's putting hitnagdut inside of his heart. That he's not accepting those words, he's not accepting those concepts, no. So now you're telling me that it's not true, that this is it, that I was wrong, no, no, I don't hear that rabbi, I don't listen to him. A Kadosh Baruch Hu rejected you. <coughs> if you hear arguments inside of your mind, they're rebuking you on your gamma brit, on the fact that you have lust for women, they're rebuking you. And now you're going to have wars inside of your mind, and you're going to go to look for your, another rabbi. And then you're going to go, and you lose what that you could achieve from that person that can give you life, that can give you everything that you need in your life. Because the thing that we lack of is faith. And people are going to other yeshivot and sitting and learning Torah and they're starving. They're starving. They don't find Hashem over there. And they can learn Torah 8 and 12 hours a day and finish Masechtot after Masechtot and it doesn't give light into the house. The wives are frustrated. They have to go to the mall every day to spend $1,000 every week or every day. Depends which yeshiva we're talking about. <laughs> And they all have boots of cowboys going to the mall with their cowboys and, and, and cowboys hats. What's that? What's that? All day long you're learning Torah and at 5 p.m. this is it. You're a cowboy. What's going on? And your wife, she's a supermodel. What's that? A cowboy married to a supermodel learns in yeshiva. And she is all day long in Facebook, of course. It's crazy. If a man in the world to come, and I'm sorry to tell you that, but in the world to come, it's judgment day. The world to come, it's a day of judgment, not of mercy. In the world to come, they're judging the person. They're going to tear the person to parts if you haven't done tshuva. But if you made tshuva, Abraham and Yitzchak and Yaakov and all of the righteous people are going to come to receive you, to open their arms, to hug you and gonna spread open in a red carpet, a blue carpet, whatever from color you, you rather, just to make you happy, and gonna respect you, and gonna say, this is our child, and we're so proud of him, and he made tshuva. The kindness is to stay here in this world and to work hard in this world. <coughs> on what? On tshuva. And especially on Kedushat Abrit, that this is the covenant, this is the agreement between us to Father in Heaven. And even that in your mind you see pictures of lust and desires, it's an agreement, it's a covenant, it's a brit, it's an oath that you made to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be holy. And it will not going to help you the fact that you don't remember that you made that oath. Because when our fathers, that's probably it was us in that generation, made that oath, we made that oath also on the future generation to come. So we're inside that and we cannot escape. And we actually don't need to want to be escaped. Because to escape from that, it's to escape from life. And the opportunity of working on that, and finally, after 20 years, after 30 years, to purify yourself and to have one day in this lifetime, to be pure, one day with holy eyes. What that you're gonna see, what that you're gonna feel with your pure heart, it's worthy to suffer, to be in hell for 200 years. It's worthy to have one moment of being close to Hashem. The pleasure that you're gonna feel from one prayer, Shmona Esri clean, one time, one time to, to see Hashem, one moment in your life. Rabbi Nathan saying, I'm going to Uman. His son, he, he wrote to his son, I'm going to Uman. Maybe I'm going to have the merit to speak one word of truth in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. One word of truth. One word of truth to say. To hear the voice of Hashem. To hear Batkol. The 36 righteous people of every generation, every day they see the Shekhinah. Every day they accept the face of the Shekhinah. And they're different from Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Because Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he sees the Shekhinah whenever he wants. But they only once a day. You know what it means to purify yourself? And if you think that you're not able, it's just because you're lazy. Because you don't have faith in yourself. That Borah Olam is not cheap. That he's very generous. 
And he wants to give you the reward of Moshe Rabbeinu and more than Moshe Rabbeinu. Whatever you want, he's going to give you. Whatever he wants is only to give. Hashem is kind and he's not cheap. He's got gold, he's got money, he's got every kind of pleasure. Whatever you want. The people that came out from Egypt, they received man. In the man, they could feel all of the tastes that they could imagine. Whatever you wanted, you could feel. Whatever you wanted, you can feel. And if you're breaking in this generation your desire for food, you're going to feel the taste of man in your achila in eating today. And if you're going to break the last, that horrible curtain that breaks the faith, lasts for women, you're going to have a desire for Hashem it barach. You're going to feel what it means to want Hashem. That nothing you cannot compare to Kirvat Elohim Litov. To be close to Hashem, it's good. It's perfect. No lackings. Every lust and every desire and every satisfaction that you can receive from this world in this contaminated body is finishing in a certain time. After two minutes, after seven minutes, after 15 minutes. And on top of that, you go frustrated and sad and with fears and anxieties and angers and all of bad attributes are coming to taste chased after that person that created demons. Created demons while he was eating, creating demons while he was with his wife, created demons while he was learning Torah. If his heart is not to um, pointed to heaven, to Hashem Barach. He's creating arrogant in the world. He's stinking the world with his arrogant. Rav Shalom said, even a person that guards his eyes, and while he's walking like that, guarding his eyes, he's got those thoughts of, wow, people for sure think that I'm a righteous man. People for sure admires me. And he's arrogant, guarding his eyes. He said the contamination and the stink that he's creating in the world is so horrible that it was better that he gonna open his eyes and gonna watch and gonna look at women 24 7 it's gonna be less worse than if he's arrogant and he's sure that he's a Talmid Chacham that he's holy that people admire him that people for sure psh, psh, wow oh wow and all of them and he's full with himself Hashem is not there on all lusts and desires, it's written that HaKadosh Baruch Hu shochen itam betoch tum otam that He is with them inside those contaminated places. And we need to believe in that. When you're in the lowest place of them all, Hashem is here. Not there, here with me now. Hashem is here, healing me, saving me. I could fall a lot lower, a lot lower. And He's saving me and He's helping me and He's hugging me and it's all with kindness. And here I'm alive, and here I have my hero at tshuva, thoughts of tshuva, and I regret, and I can do tshuva. And in the power of tshuva, you can reach the top, the peak, the heights. Just by believe that Hashem is with you. And that ayah that you have that question, where is Hashem, becomes to be ayah hasel leolah. It's the sacrifice, to sacrifice to Hashem it barach. When you're asking, where is Hashem? Where is Hashem? Means you look for Hashem Barach in darkness. It's like that you're sacrificing sacrifices on top of the altar. In Beis HaMikdash, like Avraham Avinu brought Yitzchak. That Yitzchak is asking, Ayeh! Ayeh haseh leolah b'ni. It's the, it's, the, it's the sacrifice. You're asking, where is Hashem? You see death in front of your eyes. You see death, lust, desires, angers, frustrations, sadnesses, depressions, medicines, I don't know what. You see hell in front of your eyes. You're asking, where is Hashem Barach? 12 Torah in the second part of Likotei Moharan. That question, where? It's not that you're showing confidence, that you're praying, that you're throwing your wisdom. You're just asking, Ayeh, where is He? Where are you, Ribbono Shel Olam? That question become to be Ayeh Haseh Leola. It's a sacrifice. It's Ola. It's rising straight to Hashem. Ola. No one can enjoy from Ola in this world. Only Ola to Hashem Barach alone. This is what that you receive by asking, Where are you, Hashem? Look at the kindness of Hashem. 
We're not talking on a believer. We're not talking about someone that serves Hashem. We're talking about a person that is asking questions on Hashem. Where are you? Where were you? What are you doing? That question. It's a sacrifice. Just you need to believe in that. Because that we contaminated our eyes so we cannot see with our eyes. We contaminated our hearts so we cannot feel with our hearts. Because Noef Ishach Asar Lev. You don't have a heart because you have lust for women. Because you gave your heart to women. So you don't have a heart because you gave it. So you don't have it. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying, Give me your heart. He wants the heart. He wants to see that you give your heart. Again, another spark of your heart. Another crumb of your heart. Another shavrir, broken part of your heart. Today and tomorrow and the day after. And in another it will do to reveal your will. And in another mikveh you're asking, please, Ribbon Shalom, purify me. And in another trip to Uman, you say, Ribbon Shalom, until when? Rabbi Noah Kadosh, until when? Another time you bang your head into the Kotel Amaravi and you're asking, Ribbon Shalom, what's going to be with me? And you're building that puzzle. And one day you look back and you say, hey, I felt something. I felt something. Something is different. Hey, I saw something. Something is different. I've been changed. Kadosh Baruch Hu, you gave that to me. I remember I didn't have a heart, and today I have a heart. I didn't have no eyes, and now I can see. I don't see all of the picture. I don't see everything. But something is different. Thank you, Ribbon Hashel Olam. If you pray on that thing, and then you received it, you're going to remember that it's all from Hashem. It's not going to bring you to no arrogant. But if Hashem made you to be so successful and wise, and you're succeeding, this is the only sin, this is the only place that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not there. And Ani Vahu Yecholim Ladur Bemakom Echad. Me and him cannot be in the same place. If you're saying, I am, I have, I achieved, Hashem is saying, great, enjoy, bye-bye. He lets you go. He lets you understand that you're <coughs> worthless. He show you his back. He's showing to you that he's not with you. That you're going to feel all alone. And suddenly you have fears and anxieties. And you don't know what you're going to do now. And the wife and the parents and father and mother-in-law, they're all attacking. And the economic, Parnassa, and the war, and Iraq, and Iran, and the CNN, and the, I don't know. And fears and anxieties. Why? It's because you're arrogant. Because you thought that you have certain power. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu bringing everyone on you. But David Melech is saying that even if 70 nations are coming after him, he's not afraid. Just he's going to circumcise each and every one of them. He's going to make them pure. He's going to stand up and going to purify each and every one of them. No enemies. No enemies. It's all Hashem. You coming to fight with me? I'm not here at all. You're fighting with Hashem. David Amelech, the king of Am Israel, is the one that is crowning Hashem. Because that is crowning Hashem, Barach, he's the king of Am Israel. Because he control on his own Yetzer. He's got control on himself. If you have control on yourself, every word that you're going to say, speak from your mouth is going to happen. If you control on yourself, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to answer to all of your prayers. going to listen to all of your will. Gonna provide all of your needs. Abotach Bashem, if you're counting on Hashem, Chesed is Sobevenu. Kindness is gonna surround you. Kindness is gonna influence others. That other people are gonna enjoy from you. Gonna receive from you a to Shia and advice and wisdom. People are gonna look at you and they're not gonna see you, they're gonna see Hashem. They're gonna see Hashem is talking to them. Because that you brought Hashem into your life, so Hashem is there hovering above your. Corp. And people looking and they see candle, they see light of Hashem. Light of Hashem. Moshe Isha Elohim. When he came down from Mount Sinai, they saw his face glowing. They couldn't look at him. Why? The Gemara is explaining. Because he was guarding his eyes from looking at places that were not in his level. Because he was humble. He didn't want to stare 
on the burning bush to see Hashem. Oh, what an amazing sight. The burning bush. What's that? What's going on? No, he wasn't doing that. On the spot, he realized it's Hashem. He took his head down. He was humble. He felt that he's not worthy. Because of that, people couldn't just look at him. Because he was cancelling himself to Hashem Barach, Hashem Barach cancelled all of the world for him. And it can happen every day with, with each and every one of us. Because the Torah doesn't need to come and praise Moshe Rabbeinu that we're going to admire Moshe Rabbeinu. If not, that we're going to take advice to our lives. That we're going to learn from Moshe how to serve Hashem. Like that every person needs to ask himself, when my actions going to become to be like the actions of my fathers, of my rabbis. It's a question that you should ask yourself. What's going on? How am I blocking the light that is hovering on a Rav? Why I don't have the same light? And to look in the field for more ways to cancel yourself to a Rav. To cancel yourself to the Torah. To cancel yourself to Rabbeinu HaKadosh. To listen to the voice of Chachamim. Because when you open your ears, your heart receives light. And then HaKadosh Baruch Hu is saying, Natati lachem lev shomea. I'm going to give you a hearing heart. Your heart is going to be able to receive. And then the light is penetrating and illuminate your heart. And the heart suddenly flame with lust to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And you want only Hashem. And no woman can distract your thoughts, can distract your mind. Nothing, nothing anymore. It's not yours, you don't care about it. You have desire for Hashem, for learning Torah. Like Rav Shalom said, I have only one Yetzer Ara. When I'm learning, I want to pray. When I'm praying, I want to learn. This is his Yetzer Ara. He's learning Torah and he wants to talk to Hashem. He's talking to Hashem and he's got a desire to open the books. To know Hashem it barach more and more and more. And if you think that you're not able to reach that level, I'm sorry to tell you, you don't have no faith and I'm very gentle. Very gentle. You're stupid and I'm still very gentle. Because Bore Olam brought to us a rabbi that is a Baal Tshuva. Just to show us that there is that path. It exists for Baal Tshuva. And if he's not such a sinner like us, he's a chidush, and you're going to be a bigger chidush than him, okay? What's the problem? Elisha became to be bigger than Eliyahu Anavi. Rabbi Nathan achieved twice as many than Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Why you wouldn't achieve twice as than Rav Shalom? Why? You think Rav going to stop you? You think Barol, I'm going to stop you? If your heart is to save Am Israel, if your heart is to save Am Israel, HaKadosh Baruch going to stop you? Who's going to stop you? If you're running for Hashem, you're running for your boss. You're running for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu, I'm going to stop you. Which faith we have? Which faith, crooked faith, faith we have? Twisted minds. You serve someone that is fighting with you, that is stopping you? Is it true? Is it so? It can be? No way. Just yet, Sarah is talking, Lashon Ara, Lashon Ara. No, Hashem doesn't love you, Hashem doesn't like you. Look how many times you felt. My body? Is it news that my body is contaminated? Is it new? Moshe Rabbeinu got those news when he was 80. That Bore Olam told him, Shal Na'alecha Ma'al Raglecha, take off your shoes. And Bore and the Zohar Kadosh Rabbi Shimon is explaining that he told him, get rid of your contaminated body. And we will place the body that was contaminated in leprosy, in Sarat, in a pure body from heaven. And Rabbeinu told us that he received that body from heaven. In the story that he's talking about one night of Hanukkah, that Rabbeinu met a person. That that person was huge. Rabbeinu looked at him and couldn't realize who is that person that speaks with him. Amazing Torah. And then that person walked out and Rabbeinu wanted to, to respect him and went with him to the doorstep and then Rabbeinu suddenly started to be afraid and he told him, what? why you stopped? that person asked Rabbeinu, why you stopped? so he said, I feel that you're great, that you're enormous, that you're huge I'm afraid that you're gonna do something to me if I'm gonna go out with you from the house so he told him, but if I'm so huge who gonna stop me from damaging you now if I want to do that? so Rabbeinu was quiet and he was, went with him outside, walked with him Dalet Amot outside from the house, 
when they were one step outside of the house, that person took Rabbeinu in his hands and lift him. And they fly to heaven. And they're flying in the air. And he's with, Rabbeinu is with that person. And suddenly Rabbeinu is looking and he sees that he's flying. And he felt cold because of the speed. And that person asked him, what's happened? So he said, I feel cold. The body is not functioning in those speeds. When your body will not going to function anymore, they're going to replace your body. They're going to give you a better vehicle. If you need it for Avodat Hashem. Now your Avodat Hashem is chips and potato potatoes. So you don't need another body. This is the body that you need. To eat hamburgers, you cannot eat hamburgers with the body of Rav Shalom. Few dates, few, few, few crackers he eats a day and he's full like that. Cannot eat. You're going to receive his body. What are you going to do with that body? You're going to all day long going to apologize to your wife that you cannot eat? It's not a body for you. And he gave Rabbeinu a body and he told him, now I'm going to give you a, a, another body that with that body you will not going to feel no heat and no cold and you will not going to need no eating and no drinking, no chilau shtiyah. That body going to supply you the parnasah. You receive body from heaven. If you break your nature in this world and if you don't believe in that, so work on your faith. For me it's simple. For me it's obvious that it can happen. To each and every one of you, it's obvious for me that it can happen. I don't have a doubt, the slightest doubt, that each and every one of you can have that. And even people that haven't heard that conversation can have that. And even a non-Jew can have that. Because Tana Debi Eliyahu is saying, in Eliyahu Anavi is saying in Tana Debi Eliyahu, that he is testifying, bringing testimonies from heaven and earth. That they're going to say that even a man and even a woman, a slave or a free person, a Goy, an Anjew or a Jew, they're going to receive Ruach HaKodesh according to their actions. Means that even a non-Jew can receive Ruach HaKodesh, Divine Spirit, to purify himself totally. What's the difference between Am Israel to the Jew, to the, to the Goyim now? We don't know. No one can put the finger on the difference. Just we know that Borolam said that there is a difference, that he chosen us. We cannot find a difference. I spoke with few non-Jews that I was, <laughs> I was looking up for, for them, to them. Amazing people, amazing people, amazing faith, dedicated to serve Hashem, love Hashem, love Am Israel also, love the Torah. What can you say on them? Kill them. What can I say? Based on what? No, they're goyim. They're goyim. <laughs> Nonsense. Shtuyot. So what? We don't know nothing. We know that Hashem chose us. A boy Sai. I love you. <laughs> Thank you.